If you want to see how I created this cute shoe rack for our 2018 337 Grand Design Reflection, keep watching. I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our, this is our adventures. This might take me a few days to do. I want to show you what I hope is going to be a solution of uh, when you walk in this door, shoes pile up right here. I saw a guy's post on Facebook of a little thing that he made hit here for his. He had a different camper than ours. His didn't have this door. I got to looking and I thought, you know, I can make the same thing. I can take this door off. Oh. <laughs> I can take this door off, make a little shoe rack for here. And I figured y'all are going to want to know how to make this shoe rack. I'm going to take you on this journey with me. I hope it works. In here, it's working. Here, I hope it's working. What I've planned out is I drew this little diagram. It's going to be 18 and a quarter inches wide and it's going to be 34 inches tall. And what I originally I was going to make a one by six on this side and a one by eight on this side because I want to take a one by eight board and I want to curve this edge because I'm afraid if this was a point, you would constantly be running in it coming around this curve. So I want to make it rounded. It would probably be better to use one by twos for the each side. It'll be lighter. I want to use the one by twos because one, you could be able to see through it and two, It'll keep this space, I'm hoping, a little more open feel. Bill's scared that this is just gonna crowd us, but I don't feel that it is. It's gonna have one, two, three, it's gonna have four places for shoes. And then on the very top, I'm gonna make like a little box out of uh, either lattice or one by twos. I, I bought lattice and I bought one by twos to do it. I just want to see which way looks better once I get the whole thing built because those will be added later. That way, because this I added, put the dog leashes in here and hang up their halters. If I have a box on top, we can just drop that stuff in there and that'll keep that area. Now I'm going to have to take this hanger off, I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to take this door off. But this is just hung up with man Velcro strips and they just come right off and took the finish. Just so you know, and I was worried about this on the wood over there. It just messed up the finish on that. Oh goodness. Let's see if it's going to take the finish off of all this. Yeah. If anybody's ever asked on wood, it's taken the finish off of this, but my box is going to be in the way, so it just is what it is. May have to paint that or something. Oh, that one didn't take the finish off. Well, oh, some of the finish come off. I'll show you what it looks like. So these command strips on wood or this faux wood, it did peel the, uh, that off. But you know what I'm gonna end up doing? If I make my little box and it doesn't cover it good, I'll go get some of the wallpaper and I'll put it in that insert and then you'll never see that. <sighs> Always something. But that's the thing is when it comes to RV and if you try something and you mess up something, you gotta figure out how to fix your mess up. I'm going to go out here and go ahead and build this piece. Then I'm gonna come back in here and take this door off and this off. I'll have to stain the piece. I mean, it's gonna, it may take a day or two, but for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and go try to build this piece and I'm gonna show you kinda how I put it together. I'm not really good at tutorials like this, but we're gonna try. All right, now look at this mess back here. It's gotta go to the dump. Took out our water filtration system out of the house. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my shell. The actual shelving unit is gonna be 18 and a quarter wide. I'm gonna use the one by twos, which are three quarters inch thick. So I'm gonna have a three quarter and a three quarter, which is gonna be an inch and a half. So then I'm gonna take 18 and a quarter minus an inch and a half, and that's how, I, how wide I'm gonna cut all my shelves. And I need four shelves, 16 and three quarters. So my boards are gonna be 16 and three quarters each. 
Yeah, because these are uh, one by eight, so I'll have to cut this twice because I don't have a fancy miter saw. All right, that's one cut. Now I'm gonna really quickly cut four more, three more, because I need a total of four. of those cut now I'm gonna cut my one by twos so the total height of my whole project is 34 inches so I'm gonna need four 34 inch pieces everything I need to cut right this minute I'm gonna go take and I'm gonna figure out my angle that I want on my corner and I'm gonna round off my shelves and I'll need a jigsaw for that so let's go get that set up so now I need to get this radius over here and I know that I want this to be five and a half inches deep so I've got a mark my five and a half here and that leaves a one and a half. So then I need this point to be one and a half. So I'm just marking this. And then I went and got this bowl that has a rounded edge. And I hold it on my two one and a half inch lines. And then I just take this and draw that on there. So I don't know if you can see or not, but I just cut that corner off. Now I'm just going to grab my jigsaw and uh, trim that off. Okay, so I need a workshop so I don't have to work out here in the sun, but it is what it is. I love working with wood, so a workshop would be awesome. That kind of has it curved. I'm gonna go grab my sander and kind of sand that edge off to make it a little, look a little better. if you see what I did there I just took the, the sander orbital sander and I just beveled that off this wood's super soft so it just made that all edges really smooth because that's gonna be where your hands going in and out let me finish all four of these up and then we will start assembling it go ahead and grab my screwdriver and I'm gonna take this door off because I'm bringing one of my side pieces in. I'm doing a, um, I have my measurements where I think I want my shelves to be, but I wanna have my piece of wood here and the opening here, and then kind of see how it ends up. They line up, because I wanna make sure that it's all good. Yeah, before I put all this together, I just want to make sure my measurements I've made are right. Most of you know there's an electrical box here, and so I still have to be able to get to that. Um, also, what I ended up doing is I ended up rounding the edges on this side of my 1x2. I rounded the edge over here just so that it's not like a little square edge. But I wanted to leave the square where my boards are going because I don't want that to be rounded. I want it to be flush. My board is here. I said six inches is what I wanted the first one to be at, which is gonna put it right here. So what I wanted to do is I brought in my board because I wanted to see how it fits. My first board is gonna be probably like right in there. And I wanted to make sure that that still lays down. So that's right where that board needs to be. And I'm going to mark that. So let me make sure. Oops. It was doing so good a minute ago. So that's where that one needs to be. I marked that mark because that's my first shelf. My second shelf needs to be above this so I can still get. <laughs> like I thought that was going to stand. My second board needs to be above this still get in there. 
and it still gives me a good bit of room up above that. There it is, so down. So I've got my first shelf marked and my second shelf marked and the sweat is in my eyeballs. It gives me six inches and there's room for shoes under that. And it gives me 10 inches. Let me make sure that my door works. The door works, so that will be good. It was here at 22. That would be giving me still, that gives me like, all right, so I'm gonna mark that 22. So, so far I'm like still in good with everything. That doesn't give me as big of a little spot here, but that would be good for like flip flops or something. Cause I'm gonna have this shelf, this shelf, that's shoes, shoes. Then we can put flip flops. And then my final one, okay, and that still gives me. And then I can do two little slats to keep stuff from falling off. So I moved my top ones, the only one that I really moved. So I have six, 16, 22, and then I ended up doing 29 at the top. So that's where my shelves are gonna be. It's hot, it's Alabama, it's getting humid. So now I have this marked. We're gonna nail all this together. I hate these stickers. All right, so I got that all marked. Now we're gonna start putting this together. My camera died. I think it said it was too hot. But anyway, I'm just gonna keep nailing these in because the camera is getting too hot out here. And then I'm gonna take it back, make sure it fits, and then come back and finish up the little lattice strips and stuff. Next, I'm gonna do my next dry fit. Make sure. Ooh, I may not need to put nothing right there. Well, I really don't want you to see that back there, so I may end up, I just wanna cover that because you can see down in there. Other than that, it looks like it fits really well. I'm gonna go grab, I'm gonna go ahead and cut me, measure me a piece of lattice, bring it in here and see how I want the lattice to work. And then I'm gonna put one piece of lattice here and then the other piece of lattice there. And then I can lay stuff in there and it'll keep it from coming out. This is going to work. Look, we got three, four places to put shoes. And I'm gonna attach this. I got some little brackets that I'm going to attach it to this cabinet so that it won't move because there's no reason for it to be moved anyway. And then I'm gonna have to stain this so that I'll have to let that dry for a little bit. I just realized I need to add the one, the lattice on this side. I'll do that in a minute. I gotta get the stain because I thought I had stain and I don't have it. Finish it all up. I think this is gonna be a great addition. I'm gonna finish this out once I get it stained and ready and secured, and then I'll talk about it and show how well it works. It's been a few days and I have finished the shoe rack. Wow, this has turned out amazing. I am so happy and it really was easy. The only hard part I would say, but if you had two people, the hardest part was just putting it together by yourself to try to keep everything level. It has turned out so good. Got room here for our slippers and we have room here for shoes and then room here for shoes. We don't leave a ton of shoes right here, but we do usually leave something that we can grab and run in and out with rather than keep going back to our closet all the time. So typically there's probably, you know, our house slippers and a couple of other pair of shoes that pile up here and they end up are always in your way and they're tripping ha hazards. So that's the reason I want not to make this. I absolutely love how this turned out. I ended up putting the wallpaper on the panel at the top. Then there was like an open section that was behind the door when you opened it. It was an open section that went in but you could get to that section from this door. So I'm not sure why that hole was there, but I just took some foam core, covered it with the wallpaper and hot glued it in the back. So it looks like a panel. I also took the wallpaper and covered the fuse box. And then I went and found this cool, just a three compartment metal storage area. And I figured that would be a great place like to put wallets or anything that you wanna drop real quick when you come in. And it fits in this little spot perfect because like I said, we don't probably put like a ton of shoes here. So just having these down at the bottom would be plenty. I love how this turned out at the top. We'll be able to throw the dog leashes and their collars and everything in there and grab that when we leave. And because it's secured and anchored, 
I just anchored it with a couple of brackets. I don't have to move it when we're traveling and it did not at all make this space feel smaller. Color matches the cabinets really well. It is special walnut and to tone it down just a little bit and kind of give it a little more of that muted look, I added a weathered gray stain on top of it and it turned out perfect. It really matches the cabinets really well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Also, just hit that bell notification so every time I upload a video, it notifies you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That helps us so much. Till next time, like and subscribe.